Okay, so let's go ahead and review quantitative reasoning section number four on practice test two. So if you'd like, please follow along, or if you don't have the book, go ahead and look at the uh, look at the questions directly on the book. So the first question, so this is a quantitative comparison section, and we have something, oh, we have a uh, expression over here, a thousand is greater than z, and z is greater than 500, column a is 1,000 minus z, and column b is x, uh, sorry, z minus 500. Uh, so which column is greater, column a or column b? Uh, so z can be any number which is less than 1,000 or greater than 500. So obviously in this situation, you would go ahead and plug in a number for z. And if you go, go ahead and do that, you'll very quickly realize that you have no idea whether or not column A is greater or column B is greater because it, it really depends on what you set the number to. Because check this out. If I make z 999, right, and 999 is less than 1,000, uh, what, what do we get over here? 1,000 minus 999 is equal to 1 over here. And then 999 minus 500 obviously gives you a number which is greater than 1. So column B is greater. But what happens if I go ahead and make Z 501, right? So 501 and Z is greater than, uh, 501 is greater than 500, so that's fine. So now what do we get? 501 minus 500 in this case gives us 1. And then 1,000 minus 501 gives us 499. So obviously this makes column A greater. So we have no idea, right? It could be either column A or column B. We have no idea because, you know, Z is just a, it could be any number of uh, numbers between 500 and 1,000. Therefore, the answer choice is D. So let's look at question, look at question number two. Uh, we have two sets of equations over here. A plus B is equal to 12. B plus 4 is equal to 8. This is a very straightforward question. So I can go ahead and work with my second equation because I only have one variable here, right? In this equation, I have two variables. So it's much easier if I solve for this. So B plus 4 is equal to 8. I can subtract by both sides, and I get that B is equal to 4. Well, I know that B is equal to 4, and I know that in my first equation, I have A plus B is equal to 12, and I already now know what B is equal to. So if B is equal to 4, I can now plug this in, and I get A plus 4 is equal to 12. Now I simply subtract 4 by both sides, and I'll get as A is equal to 8, and then so if A is equal to 8, and B is equal to 4, obviously column A is greater, therefore my answer choice is A. Let's take a look at question number 3. A, B, and C are positive integers, okay? Column A, the product of A, B, and C versus the sum of A, B, and C. Now right away, right off the back, you might be very quick in saying, hey, look at this, the product of A, B, and C, right? This is multiplication. Obviously, this column must be greater than column B because column B is only sum, right? You're only adding here. Uh, but don't be so quick, okay? A, B, and C are only positive integers, okay? So it really depends on which numbers you pick. So obviously, if you pick you know, numbers like 5, 7, and 8, the product will be most certainly greater if you compare it to their sum. But what happens if you pick 1, 2, and 3, right? A is 1, B is 2, and C is 3. What's the product? 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. How about here? What is the sum of A, B, and C? 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, right? So now we're stuck in this situation where actually now we don't know if column A is greater than column B because we're not so sure what A, B, and C are. A, B, and C could be 1, 2, and 3. They could be 5, 7, and 8, or they could be a number of things, right? So therefore, the answer choice is D. Let's take a look at question number four. Question number four over here, the greatest prime factor of 17. And the greatest prime factor of 17 is actually 17 itself because 17 is a prime number. The only factors are 1 and 17. And the greatest prime number of 16 uh, happens to be uh, 2, right? Because 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 is a factor, and 2 is also a prime number. Uh, therefore, this question uh, is A, column A is greater because 17 is a, big, a larger number than 2. Question number five, it's comparing the percentage of increase of 10 to 15 and the percentage of increase from 54 to 58. So how do you go ahead and do that? So if you want to figure this out and find the percent of increase, what you have to do is basically you want to take uh, the difference of the current amount and the new amount, and you want to divide by the original amount. That is the formula. So hopefully you, you guys memorize the formula. If not, look back at your ma manual. So what do we have over here? 10 and 15. 15 is the new value and 10 is my original value all over 10 and I get 5 over 10 which uh, uh, becomes 50 percent. Now do the same with column B. What do we have over here? 58 minus 54 
all over 54, and you can use your calculator for this, you get 4 over 58, and if you plug it into the calculator, you should get something along the lines of 0, uh, 0 0.068, or simply uh, point, uh, sorry, not point, 6.8%, or 6.9%. So now you can go ahead and compare the values. Obviously, 50% is larger than just 6.9%. Therefore, your answer choice is A. Let's take, a question, uh, look, uh, let's take a look at question number six. There are 100, 150 people in the auditorium. 75 are women, 60 are men, and the rest are children. So how do you go ahead and solve this? Column A is 10%, and column B is saying the percentage of children in the audience. Okay, so if I have 150 people in the audience, and 75, women are, uh, 75 are women, 60 are men, and the rest are children, I can simply add 60 and 75 and subtract it from 150. And if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get 15 children, right? And it's saying, what is the percentage of children in the auditorium? So I know there's 15 children, and, uh, and the entire, the total amount is 150. So you can use your calculator once again, and 15 over 150 is 10%. So I have 10% here, I have 10% here, therefore both values are the same. So uh, the answer choice is C, both quantities are the same. Let's take a look at question number seven. X and Y are greater than one. Column A is 4 times X and Y, and column B is 4X times 4Y, okay? Uh, and right off the back, sometimes, you know, some students might say, well, you know what, it looks very similar, 4 times X times Y and 4 and X and times 4 and Y, but actually it's not, right? Analyze these two expressions carefully. They're actually different, right? They're not so similar at all. So let's just, let's just uh, you know, give these two a uh, hypothetical value. Let's say X is 2 and Y is 3. So 2 times 3 times 4 for this is going to be what? It's going to be 8 times 3, uh, which is 24. And then over here I have 4 times x, which we said was 2, times 4 times 3, right? And I don't even have to solve this question because I already know that I have an extra times 4 over here. So no matter what the question is, right? I'm sorry, no matter what the values of x and y are, because x and y are greater than 1, column B will always result in a higher value. Therefore, the answer to question number 7 is going to be that column B is always greater than column A. Let's take a look at question number 8. The number of days in 15 weeks, okay, so how many weeks, uh, how many days are in a week? 7, so 15 times 7, I have 105 days. And then compared to the uh, number of minutes in 3 hours, so obviously each hour has 60 minutes, I can do that and multiply by times 3 to get the total amount of minutes, and I have 180 minutes, and uh, 180 minutes, uh, the 180 is obviously uh, greater than 105, uh, therefore the answer choice is B. Question number nine. A truck traveled 130 miles with four gallons of diesel fuel. What distance would the same truck cover driving the same route with 6.7 gallons of diesel fuel? Okay, so what you can do over here now is uh, I know that the truck traveled 130 miles with four gallons, and if I divide 130 divided by four, I can go ahead and find out how many miles it uh, drives uh, per gallon, right? So if you go ahead and plug that into your calculator, you should get 32.5, right? So 32.5 miles uh, you get with one gallon. And now they're asking for 6.7 gallons, so I can go ahead and multiply 32.5 miles times 6.7 uh, and you should go ahead and get uh, 217.75 miles. So you ma make sure you go ahead and use your calculator once again. Question number 10. So I have absolute value over here, right? So the absolute value of negative 10 minus 18 is the absolute value of negative 28 minus uh, 20. And what do I get over here? I get negative 28 becomes positive 28 because this is an absolute value sign. And 28 minus 20 simply results in 8. And my answer choice is A. Let's take a look at question number 11. The square of the sum of two numbers is 289. The product of the, number, of the, the two numbers is 66. What are the sum of the squares of the two numbers? Okay, so now let's go ahead and read this question again. Okay, this, this question may be tricky. Okay, so you want to go ahead and use 
x and y to substitute for the two unknown numbers. So the square of the sum of two numbers is 289. Okay, so hold on. So if the square of the sum of two numbers, that's simply x plus y squared, right? And I know that it's going to be equal to 289. Okay, but since I have this, I know that I can go ahead and FOIL it now. So x plus y squared is simply x plus y times x plus y. And hopefully you know you have to use the FOIL method, and you get uh, x squared plus y times x plus xy uh, plus y squared. So what does that result in? So I'll write it out here. You get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is equal to 289. And now the question is stating that the product of the two numbers is 66. The product of the two numbers is 66, okay? So xy is 66. So let's go ahead and plug that into our equation, uh, into our equation over here. So I have x squared plus 2 times 66 plus y squared is equal to 289. I'm sorry that I'm going into this question over here. And now you can go ahead and solve this, right? x squared plus 66 times 2 is 132. 132 plus y squared is equal to 289. And uh, I hope you can go ahead and do this on your paper. You will subtract 132 from both sides, and you will go ahead and get something uh, along the lines of, so I'll write over here, uh, you'll get uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 289 minus 132, which is 157. And now, now you know, now you're stuck, right? You just have x squared and y squared. What do you do? Well, look at look back at what the question is asking you. What is the sum of the squares of the two number? What is the sum of the squares of the two numbers? And you've just solved that x squared plus y squared. All right, this is some of the uh, this is the sum of the square of the two numbers, which is 157. Therefore, the answer is 157.